I'm uh, Sarah Korere, the MP for Laikipia North. I was born in this area. This is the Mugogodo Division. I started the school at the age of six, and I will trek for about 11 kilometers every morning to school and back. Up to about 1984, when I joined the Doldol Catholic Mission. And after finishing class eight, I went to Doldol Secondary. And again, I managed to score very good uh, grades at Form 4. <coughs> after Form 4, my dad made it clear to me that he cannot spend even a single penny because he couldn't understand how he was going to spend so much on taking me to university. And then after all, I'll get married off and the benefits will go to another person. I had a very difficult uh, time going to university. I first had to hustle, you know, and uh, I later on joined uh, Egerton University in 1997 to do education in sciences. But like any other traditional Maasai parents, especially my late father, uh, sometimes they found school like just, you know, some place where you will take your girls to just grow, you know, as they wait for the next phase, of course, which was to go to the husband. My dad had six wives, and I think more than 30 children. I was used to fighting for my space at a very tender age. Because like from my mother, we were about seven of us, and not all of us went to school. But for me, it was a personal ambition that I wanted to push on and on and on. At one time, we really crossed uh, you know, paths because he told me that he has never, ever had any of his child who have defied his orders, so I was the first. But uh, for the four years, I think I hardly saw my father because I, you know, I didn't have the guts. And when I settled down with my job, there was a time when there was a serious drought and all his, he took his animals to Mount Kenya and all of them got finished. And after the rains, I took a loan and bought about 20 cows and I took them to him. And he was very, very proud of it. I grew in a community where very few of us were lucky to go through school. And if we started class one, like about 100 girls, by the time we were finishing class eight, we were less than 20. When he joined uh, Form 1, again, another group of about 20 girls, when he finished Form 4, we are less than 10. And of course, I think in our, my class that time, I was the only girl who, who joined university. So to me, I saw a lot of challenges that were not being addressed by the leadership that directly affected the girl child. And I knew it had to do with the policies, which nobody was bothering. It had to do with, you know, development of schools, like boarding schools that will give these girls an opportunity to concentrate with their studies. I was very much convinced that one day I will run for an elective position because I would love to be where, you know, where decisions are made, decisions that particularly uh, affected the women. I used to do a lot of work with the communities. I am a very staunch campaigner of education both boy child and uh, girl child. I do a lot of work with the Morans and the young girls. So, you know, as opposed to some leaders who are hardly seen in the community, and when they are seen, it's like they make a technical appearance during events and disappear, me, I'm always with them. So, you know, through that interaction, they, 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 you know, they, they came to, to, to trust me. Yeah. I've been a nominated MP for the last uh, term of parliament, that is since uh, uh, 2013 March up to 2017 August. I knew it was a, a platform for me to advance my, 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 my political ambitions, to advance my political career. I ran for the seat of uh, Laikipia North which I thank God that I emerged the winner. The competition was uh, quite stiff. And uh, even the time when I, I almost uh, lost hope was during the party nomination.
because the ODM fellows on a direct ticket, the PNU fellows on a direct ticket, the Kanu fellows on a direct ticket, all of them ganged up to support my main competitor. And to me, I thought that was the time where I really saw a, a real challenge. And when I came, I, 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 I came out uh, a winner in the party primaries with a very small margin, of course. So I could clearly gauge and uh, try to locate votes for every candidate. There were a lot of, uh, you know, very weird things that were used against me. And uh, part of it was a lot of insults. Because, you know, some, some of my competitors, even in social media, they, they will post a lot of things. They will want to know who is my husband, when did I, you know, things that will not even, you know, I don't know why they should, because nobody asks these male colleagues who their wives are. And again, they will say that according to the Maasai community, I will bring, you know, a bad omen to the men of the community. And even some of my relatives were, were used to go around and say that unless the community want the men in my family to, you know, all of them to die, they should elect me. And they went out appealing for people. But I also thank my family because I had brothers who really stood by me. I held, uh, you know, neighbors who really stood by me. And everybody was telling me, no, 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 no. The Maasai community is so patriarchal. Go for the position of the women. At some point, I was even told that if I go around campaigning in some areas, I'll be shot dead. It had been attempted because in uh, January 18th of uh, last year, my car was shot at. I think th th those are just ways of telling you that uh, somebody somewhere is scared of you. I knew what I was looking for and I was not going to let anything distract me. Seeing the elders, you know, coming together to campaign. They, they did not just campaign for me. They even supported me, you know, they fundraised for me. You'd see an old man with 10 cows selling one for me. To me, I knew if, you know, if I don't do it, I would have let a whole people, you know, a people who had put a lot of hopes in me, I would have let a lot of them down. According to all my opponents, I was the least of their competitors. So to me, I will say it was very sweet victory because they didn't see it coming. And to me, it was a very humbling experience that actually, despite everything, that despite everything that was said about me, being the only woman, and of course people saying that the Ma community looks down upon women, because I think I started an early lead. The gap kept on, you know, widening. And by the, by the time we were three quarter away, all my competitors were not had disappeared. So by the time I was declared the winner, none of them was there. Because to me, I really wanted to thank them for, you know, making me such a strong person. Because without that stiff competition from them, I wouldn't have worked as hard as I had. Mimi, Sarah Paulata Korere, nikiwa nimechaguliwa kama mwanachama wa bunge la kitaifa, na hapa kwa jina la mwenyezi mungu kwamba, nitakuwa mwaminifu na mtifu kwa watu ya jamhuri ya Kenya nitayatekeleza majukumu yangu ya bunge kwa uaminifu na uangalifu ewe mwenyezi Mungu nisaidie a few of them are also organizing for a cleansing ceremony you know to cleanse the, themselves and to cleanse the men so that they won't be caught by bad men of being led by a woman. So to me, I'm used to all these things. I'll just sit and wait. <coughs> when there was these issues of insecurity, you know, I came out strongly to condemn and also to state what I believe in. So that landed me into a lot of problems. And uh, a casting ceremony was organized by the MP then, and I was cast. And I remember for the next two months, my mother did not sit pretty with it. You know, she was so stressed and she was even begging me to, you know, to resign and leave politics because to her she thought now being cast by the elders as per the Maasai traditions was going to be something, you know, very, very bad. There was a time when there was again in those sides of social inter-ethnic clashes again where about eight people were killed. Again, when I came out to try to, you know, 
to, to, to mediate between the two communities, again, it landed me into trouble. Because, you know, I was labeled as this person who does not, you know, stand with their community. But to me, my community is anybody who lives in Laikipia. And uh, that is a war that led to rather some very ugly incidents between me and the then MP at the Harambe house. And after that uh, fight, again, another cursing ceremony was organized. And of course, the elders, you know, came together to condemn me. Number one, they said, you know, I, I slapped a man, which of course was not true because the men slapped me. And they said that it was against the traditions for a woman to fight a man. And again, they said I was, you know, I was supporting a community that was perceived to be their enemy. <laughs> slowly by slowly, even the, I, I started getting a, a nod from the elders. And in fact, one time they, they paid my mother a courtesy call and said they wanted to apologize for cursing me. And my mom called me and she organized for, a, you know, a meeting between me and the elders and they actually apologized to me. And that was the day they told me, well, we think you can be a better MP. I've had women praying and fasting because of me. And you know, it is really very really touching when somebody else is fasting for a whole week because of you. So to me, because I, I, I don't believe in these uh, curses and all these things, I believe in God. And that faith in God keeps me going. My mother, uh, she's been one of my pillars of hope. Because every time when I sit with her, she always tells me, you know, I wish my parents had taken me to school. But if I were you, I would do things differently. And every time I think of, you know, abandoning my dream halfway, I think of how disappointed she will be. Of course, I, I had a manifesto, which I sold to the people. I intend to keep every single word that is in that manifesto. The main complication in Laikipia is whereby every time we have a leadership, we have a group that is crying fall because the leader comes from this community and somebody else comes from that co another community. So uh, as a person, I first want to bring everybody on board so that every Laikipian will rightfully, th you know, will feel that they have an absolute right to be in Laikipia and their rights are protected. To me, it will be a more people-oriented leadership, a more bottom-top approach, not the top-bottom approach. I intend to be a role model to many and I will continue my mentorship programs because I believe in bringing up other women and young girls, you know, into believing in what they want. Mimi ni kiwaongoza nyinyi kina mama, tutatembeleana na wamama wa isiolo, tutatafutana na wamama wa samburu. Kwa sababu tunasema ujambazi laikipia north ni sharti ikome. Tutaweka mikakati ya kuhudumia nyinyi wote na haswa wakati tunapata amani na usalama maendeleo yule kubwa ambaye mimi kama sara nitangangana kulete laikipia hii ni elimu na haswa elimu ya mtoto msichana na hiyo sitaweza bila nyinyi vile sikuweza kuchukua hii kiti bila nyinyi Pia safari ya kuhudumia wananchi bila nyinyi sitaweza. I also realize why, why we fail uh, many times uh, on women empowerment because we want to make it a purely women agenda. And in my case, I would also want to bring men on board. When we are discussing women agendas, then we have men on board. Because in, in a patriarchal uh, community like the Maasai community, of course, the custodians of the customs are the men. So if you leave them out of this discussion, then you might not uh, realize much.